and I am speaking for that forever and ever we're going to go to heaven and be with him there I know
brother Jim is going to give us a song on the piano. <laughs> Praising him, that's what it's all about. It's praising our Lord. Thanks, God. He's got, if you feel like standing, uh, that's fine with us. Uh, praising him is we serve a great, big, wonderful God and to honor him in our life. May our hearts be filled with dancing. Within me, I'll 
time, Brother Gail is going to come up and minister the Word of God. And those children who want to go to Children's Church may go. There are several people not here today, but you're here, and I just want to start in something with a brand new series, and uh, there's a lot of things in our lives that are stressing things. On your paper, there's a little paper that says stressed out, just to get you to understand that there's a better thing than stress. You just turn the word around. It's exact same letters, turn it backwards, and it's deserts, deserts, I mean. And uh, we have the things where God comes in all of our lives, that God wants to do those things in our life. Years ago, I got a, a letter from the um, PGE, T -E, yeah, Pacific Gas and Electric, and um, they had that thing, and they send it out. It wasn't on this sermon, but when I saw that neat little thing that they had here about this guy, Delirious Dan, uh, it's a thing to where that you can understand it, that you might have done this in your life. I know my granddaughter has put her keys or my, her parents' keys into the thing over here. And they were screaming and all. We used to do it all the time because we just liked to do it. It was a tickle. And we took little hairpins and stuck them up. The kids are not here, so I can say that to you. But you kids, you guys might, might have done it too. But when you look at delirious, Nan, that word delirious, means wandering in the mind by a mental disturbance that was caused by grave physical illness and a nervous shock. But you look in the thing about this idea in Bible ways, that they're living in a believer's life in a non-believing nation. And I'm here to tell you, they're getting to where they do not believe in God. They do not want anything to have around them. But when you look at a time in Daniel chapter 3, verse 18, it said, but if not, looking at that and understanding the stressed things in all of our lives, the things that come down and begin to get a hold of us, there's times that we understand that there's expectations all around us where we've had them only to be disappointed when things don't happen as we, well, the way we thought they should have been. And so many different things when you're looking down there are different lists of different things I wanted to give you to where you can learn from them. Years ago, yeah, that there was a guy that was, his name was Jorge Rodriguez. True story. He turned around and was a man that was a, a meanness. And he held up on the uh, USA side. And then they go back in from Texas and going back into Mexico. And Jorge would often slip around the border line. He came to the banks of that place. He stole what he wanted to stay do so. And before they could catch Jorge, he would race back into the Mexico and hide out. And no matter and how hard and long 
was trying to do all they could do against the things that were happening. They could not ever bring it to an end. It goes on to tell the story about a man that finally, the Mexican boy that had got to himself, this guy came to town and he was six feet, two and six inches tall, 230 pounds. He was big and he was one that can get things done. And this is supposed to be a whole story that I can understand it. But it talked about a time that they were going to the cantina and they came into it. And when they came to that point of that place, they found out that uh, they were looking and they found the guy that they were looking for and he was going to take them in. Story goes on about a way that Orgy he was going to be taken to arrest and he's going to get the money that they'd ever taken. And it went on and on and on. But anyhow, went on to talk about that Jorge does not speak any English, but he was in a point that he is my amigo, so I will translate for him, came this little guy to him. The ranger explained that he looked at this idea and seen that was going on and what was going to take place. He said that there was millions of dollars that had been taken. He said, you're going to have to turn it all back. And he said, and he went on that he's going to take him and he's going to just, nothing's not hopeful for you in your things before you. But then all of a sudden, this text ranger, he turned around. He's going to take it down upon them. And he's going to take and deal with it at that particular time. But Jorge said to himself, oh, wait a minute. He was talking in his language. And as he was talking to his little person next to him, to the great big guy that was over him at that particular second, he said, I want you to do, I want to keep my life. And he was talking in his dinner. And as he did this, he said, the well is on the south end of the place. And if you go on the east side of it, you'll find out and you'll go down to the 10th brick down from it. You can find all the money that I've ever stolen in all of my life. And I don't want you to take and kill me or to put me in jail or anything else like that. After a little while, the little translator went over to to this little boss man that was there. And as he done that at that particular time, he said to his, the man that was standing there that didn't understand what he was saying and everything that was going on. And finally, the little boy says, uh, Jorge says, go ahead, you big mouth. Go ahead and shoot him because he's not telling you where the money is. So sometimes people have ways that they got their ways of getting rid of the struggles in our life and the things that we might be going through. And it's just instance of things that we can see that in our lives. But when you look at the things about the law, and when we look at the operations in the various types of spiritual realm that is around us, that's capable to find that only God can bring them into us. And those intimate and those things of the plans of God and what God wants to do in yours and my life and many people that are being ministered to because of God and what he wants to do. And somehow we begin to ask ourselves, are we going to get caught into people coming together? Is another man got another thought from somebody else that he now can take and receive it? And he'd have all this money inside of him. But what does he do? But see, life has so many of those things that come into every one of our lives that we find ourselves that we can find the fiery furnaces, especially that we're talking about today, about a group of three boys that were going to turn around and they would not turn their God away, but they're going to hold on to God. And in that process, they were going to be thrown then into a place that was going to cause them to burn them to, and they would be no longer be, and things that were there taking place in his life. See, there are times that when God cuts across the expectations and the various of the schedules that are there and the places that we're 
hired or something that we have to do. We became to a point that we become shocked about the things of saying, God, how can I make it in a world that's like that kind of situation? Yet at the same time, we ourselves are found up and we are under the wonders and the wonders that are there and the wonders that are just things that you don't know what to do. Sometimes you think about that you're like the sparrows that are being picked up, the sparrows that are about to be taken home to the family. We come to that point. And sometimes we find ourselves and we're thinking, God, help me to where that I can get the truths of God and the things that only God can give to us if we would just only come to that point in our lives. There's a song that we sing sometimes. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother nor my sisters, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And that's where we begin to wonder the questions and the things that we wonder, God, am I going to be able to find that thing to where it can come into my heart? And the truth of it is this, is that if you intend to go on with God, you will need to come to the times that God gives you a word called need. And needs are things that God gives you. You can't get it. You can't buy it. You can't be told about it. But the needs that God can give to you, it's some that he has to prepare into us for those times when God chooses to wean us from the, uh, his ways of going through this and at the appointment times that are going around us. And all of a sudden we're asking ourselves at that time, the time is there, it's always there, it surrounds us. And these things can happen in all of our lives. A lot of these lists that you see in here on this stress house, one of them is talking about one in there is about how to have a good fight. And you turn around, and I looked in and I looked the story about it's called marriage. And sometimes we wonder how we're going to make it through it. Or maybe at a job that we're working in. God, what are we going to do with it? Everything that are lists can be many, many things that God would speak to our hearts where that we can understand what God is trying his best to get all these things to just open up before us. And that word is called trust. Now, in your pockets, I don't have them right now. I save them up for my granddaughter, and they add up and different things like that. But in them, that says, in God, we trust. And I want them to understand when I give it to them, the money, different things like that. I want them to understand that. Do you understand what God's... He said, in God we trust. And it's this money that you're going to spend in. It's your trust in all the things that God can do that can give us the things that eventually that all of us will have to come to and asking God to where that he can give us all that he wants us to have. And through all the different things and these things that are the structs, subtracts and these addings up and the things that are doing it, you know what? I found out God's always been eventual. He's eventual in all of my life. And all the things that I've gone through, God is always eventual in your life, in my life, all of our lives, of what God can do. But will to do so as his own will or on his own schedule or somehow his own glory that he's going to come into? But that's the time that the problems come. The schedule is not fit for the moment of the hour. It's not the real of things that I want right now. And suddenly we get things like feelings and we get things of pride and senses of time that get a hold of us. And we then feel the suffers in the processes of the things that are around us. And that we may suffer intensely and we don't know what to do. But this redemptive process is something that it's me, it's me, it's me. I'm standing in the Lord of need. And that's God. 
God comes through. That in God we trust, we give you that money. And the world that's got together, put it together, came up with the thought of writing them around it at the bottom of it. In God we trust. And they were trying to say, this is the way that things can sometimes make it to you. But sometimes you're suffering. You're, what am I going to do? And that's what happens in this story. In Daniel chapter 3, there's a man named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were hauled before the king, and they're charged with refusing and bowing down like we had talked about the story this morning today. But somehow or another, that, the word, that we come to ourselves to that point. In that particular thing, that thing that was limit in the time that they were making it there, that was a thing that was 90 feet tall. It was nine feet wide. And there they were in Daniel chapter 3 and verse 17. It's God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that he will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou set up. We find these things that are happening all around. And everybody has it even in the, the first year of your marriage, the second, the third, the fourth. Well, it just keeps going. Sometimes it gets those things into us, and sometimes there are things that are we're wondering what are we going to do and how are we going to just get through this situation. Maybe you took on a, a college thing and got into the ability of doing a certain thing, and you wonder, can I ever survive in something like that? But again, you got the money in your pocket, and it says, in God we trust. And when we do that, we understand that, that God does bring it to you. And we begin to understand what is God going to do with you in that process. And at that time, we realize the deliverer, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, comes into our lives. And suddenly the schedules that are around us, that God is trying to come through in all of our lives. And that God, will you cease to be God? Should he stop following God? But God comes into our lives and he says, there's a whole bunch of things in the Bible. And I open up my book and I see a word called Moses who went out there in the wilderness until after 40 years. Or I look at a man named Samson in the Bible. When I was in a place in a, a place that I was into a juvenile hall, not because I did anything. I was, some that there don't know what I'm... I was, my mother went out of state, and went into Idaho. She didn't ask my dad. He did not like it. He got her put in jail, and then we were put in juvenile for just a short time to keep us together, just to keep us together. But I want to say this. I read those books. I didn't know what they were. I didn't know what it was about. But then I look about a guy named Samson, the, the Philistine prison, or looking at Daniel from the lion's den. Then you come to the points of Jeremiah, always found in a pit. God didn't come out to keep Job out of the churches of the devil. And God didn't come through to Naboth, a, a person that did not hand over to Jezebel as a henchman, what it was. But God comes through. And I look at another one. There's Joseph there. And from being sold into an Egyptian slavery for uh, being into a prison. You look at another, about three Hebrew children from the fiery prison, and somehow they come out anyhow. And you look in John the Baptist, every time you look at him, he comes to a point that in the end, he's having the head chopped off, off. You look at Paul, the apostle, and what he was going through, the, the struggles that were coming in his life to keep to the points that there was a lot of shipwrecks and there were stonings and imprisonments. And initially, there was a martyrdom that came upon him. But it comes to a point that comes with these authorities in our lives. And then you look at a man named the Apostle John, who's on the Isle of Patmos, 
He's telling the world, God's going to take care of it all. And in the end, the Lord is going to take it all. And that there's going to be a new heaven, a new earth, a new all things that are promised to us by God's grace and mercies to us. So reading the Bible, it helps us to understand that somehow, some way, God is always going to be there. God will be there. When you think about the human standpoint, it appears that God allowed them to suffer and to die. But that's not true. God has never done that. Sometimes you wonder, what am I supposed to do? What's the difference? See, we have to understand in God's acts and God's ways. He's a God that I can read in the Bible. He can do anything that's in the Bible if you'll accept it and let it come into your heart and your life. But what about the thing that the ways that he's making me to do? See, that's better than the acts. The acts are about what was. But what the ways is, is that God is my God. My God is my Lord. He's everything about him. And he wants to give that to us. When you look in your Bible, you see a man named David all the way through it, that God made known his ways even unto Moses and acts with all the children of Israel just as much as he done to others that are in the Bible and can give us understandings. So when we come understanding that the acts are things, are delays, but the things that is what's happening is his ways, that God wakes you up and he gives it to you. I remember one time when I was a young kid, married to my wife, and we were just young together. I was 22 years old, and she was going about 19 years of age. But I tell you what, when you can turn your time, and I went into the bedroom, and I said, God, I heard people where they've seen angels, they've seen God, they've seen the glory, they've seen what God can do. So I shut the living door, and I didn't want Desi to see me. And I turned around and I had the chair, the bed was there. And when it was there and the, there was a little bathroom that was open, the light was lit up inside to the room. And I said, God, everybody said I've seen angels. I've seen touches of God and everything's like that. And I got down and prayed. Everybody can do that, but I haven't seen anything like that happen in my life. Why not? Why can't I have an experience like that? And then all of a sudden I turned around, I was laying there and I was crying and praying out before God. I was not even starting to preach a pastor, but I turned around and I remember when I did, I just cried out before God. I said, God, I just, I believe in you. I believe you're everything. You can do everything. And about that time, I heard the voice to my coming in beside me. And as I did, I turned around and I heard the words that said, Look up to me and you'll see me. I grabbed the bottom of the, the bed and I pulled as hard as I could. And I pulled my face into it. I said, God, I don't have to see you to believe. I believe in you. And then he said, go ahead and look up. I said, look at me. And I thought to myself, I could never do it. And I pulled harder. And I tell you what, I never did lift up my head. After it was all gone and everything was gone, he had already spoke the most important point is trusting that God is God. And you can have it with his presence. You don't have to see this or that. I've read all these men in the Old Testament and I thought, God, I can never, ever begin to come to that kind of person. But when Kong comes to the point that we turn it over to God, and there are three statements worth making us to go into the various things that only God wants us to give to all of us. Now, the first one there is that when God doesn't come through, it's never because God, because God is not able. That's not it. What it means is this, is like the three, these Hebrew children, with one statement that they had, 
And as they stood there, they had these words, Our God is able. They pulled out that quarter and said, In God we trust. In God we trust. In God we trust. All of them have it on it. Every one of them, somebody may try to get it out, but it stays there. And they put it on again. Our God is able. And all these things begin to work into our lives. We come to the point we find as we're speaking and saying, God, as you're acting upon it, and I'm feeling the touch of it like I did in that room. I never did lift up my head. I refused to do it. I did not do that because that would have been turned around and said, then I only did it because he did that. But when I had to take trust and faith before him, then he began to do what only he can give to you and I. And all the various things that only God can do for us, that we can understand that our God is able. God is able. And uh, one time I was having troubles with uh, somebody in the church was giving me a hard time and in it. And they were asking me what you're going to do about these things. I said, I got a song. And uh, it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And I started singing that song. Another preacher on the other side of the state, he was going through something just as bad as I was going through. He said, how do you do it? I said, I got a song. He said, what's your song? I said, I just said simple. And he said, he said what is it? It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. What it means? In God we trust. Amen. It's facting it into God that only God can do. And somehow or another, God begins to bring us his presence into us. He soaks himself into us, just like he did Moses, just as he did at Joseph. It didn't matter. God always comes through. And then when God doesn't come through, that's always in order to work out his eternal redemptive purpose. God's got a poison. He's got something for you. You know what? It was in that juvenile hall at the age of 11. I was told by God, I heard a voice. I was a Catholic Mormon. I did not know those things. But I turned around. I heard God say to me and said, I'm going to make you a pastor. They don't have them in, cor in the Catholic Church. They do now, but there's some. But then the, 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 the Mormon Church, they don't have one like that. But God said, I'm going to make you a pastor. And when God does those things in our lives, there's a purpose. There's something that protects us. There's one that always comes through. There's a one that comes to the point to where that we know that our God is an awesome God. And we can trust and trust and trust in him. I like him. He carries forward. He does all things. But about what all the others, frankly, is this, night, this point of being explained. And then God begins to do it. He has to use the hard things. That was the hardest thing. If you ever got a job somewhere, you have to come to these two things. Number one is, you got a way of doing it. That's what we do here. He said, there's another thing. It takes works. It takes people that will do it. And that's all God is saying to us is the where that we can come to that point of ways and works that God does that. And his works are always will be the best things that God can ever give. Anything better than that is when God always flies through. I wasn't going to bring this up, but I want you to look at this next one here. Is that on the back of yours, there's that there's furnace experiences are bound to come to each of us. I wasn't going to say very much on it, but I will say some, some things about it. I want you to write down, what does that mean to you? is what God is doing for us. What is he doing in this experience I'm going through? What are the things are the bounding that comes upon us, that comes our way? It's time to have desserts again instead of having stressed it, as the words are now in there are. In John chapter 16, verse 3, Jesus declared that these things 
I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have its tribulations. But be of good cheer, and I have overcome the world. The second thing that's on there on the back here is about trouble there, is it can be, uh, uh, troubles does not have to be tragic, though that they may be our evaluation of it. It's a point where that God does something. Here's the two words. They both start with T. Tragedy and the other is triumph. Which one would you like? Do you want it to have tragedy without a triumph? The truth of this is triumph does not come unless something was there. And somehow in the process of it all, God is always there. And everywhere we go, and God can always come into our lives. And that we may be deported, we may come to furnaces, we may come to all sorts of different things, all those different things God is saying, what can I do for you? What can I do at this particular time? What can I come to these points of the various ways that are obviously a lot of talkings and different things I've got that talk about these things? But it's when the point we understand that somehow or another that God can take the stressed and how many likes desserts? You got it made, see? God comes through if we'll let him do it. And when he does that, that brings me to that third is, is what does it take for such a faith as this for our fiery furnaces? Write it down. I want you to come down something in it. Come and tell me about it. How God comes through, that you have a trust in God, and then the existence and the believing in it, the providence of God, the ruling of God. I want to tell you, did a did our presidents ever built a world? Have they ever made a, uh, all the things of, that we got on this earth today and all the stars that are in the place and all the different things that God has done? I want to tell you, God is a God that cares and cares for all of us. And if you may be a three Hebrew children, but you can still say God is able and we can trust God. And when God does all those things, we know that he's able to do all those things. God, help me to reach out. You can cry out with this young man here that there must be a consistency in common responsibilities. God is God. Just like I sang that song, it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. I can win. I won. And you know what? It, another friend. It did for him too. It's a point of faith and trust in all that we can do with God. And that brings us to this third is that we must have an irrevocable commitment in the trustworthiness to God. Could you imagine that they went out there and you say, how bad was it? The ones that threw them in died from the heat of it all by themselves. What did Jesus do? He opened the doors and Jesus walked with them <laughs> in the fire. If you read that in there, it's just amazing what God can do. And he comes through that this, this heater had been heated up seven times better, hotter and hotter than all things. But somehow, as you look down towards it, you find that these three men fell down in the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And in the form of the fourth is what? Like the Son of God. But you know that God has always been just as real, even as they had in the furnace. The rest of it reads in this Daniel chapter 3, verse 26. It says, Then Nebuchadnezzar went ne near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace. He spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High, come out, come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego came from midst of the fire. 
verse 27. And the satraps, administrators, governors, the king's counselors, gather together and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor their garments affected. And the smell of the fire was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and who sent his angels and delivered his servants who trusted in him, and they have frustrated in the king's word and yield their bodies, and they should not serve nor worship any God except capital God. Who said that? The king. The man. That had over everything. Why? Because they found the Son of God there. They talked with him. They stayed alive. And all things are possible. So I want to say to you that there's a lot of thoughts that are ahead of you about these stressed out things in there. I hope that some way that God will make your ways to where that he'll make them into desserts in your life. If you'll trust God, believe God, and everything I got in my pocket, even at this moment, as in God we trust on it, paper or coin, it's all things that are telling you, I trust in God. I believe in Him. You know, there's not as many people in church right now, but we still have about 189 people they're watching this on our tape. And we love them and their friends and people that we know. I still tell to these and to them that in God we trust. In God I believe. In God I'm going to have it. In Christ Jesus. All things. Time to eat desserts, isn't it? Okay. Just turn it around. Take out stressed and make it into desserts. That's what God's got for you. And I'll thank Father God. We, we stop. We, we thank you, Lord, because you are our king, are the one that's done so much in our lives. I remember so many years ago in 1971 in that room, I had the most divine moment of God I've ever had in my life. But God, when I was only 11 years old, you spoke to me in a juvenile house. You've done everything. And God, somehow, you've always been there. And I pray, Lord, that each one of these things that we can look and look at the angers and the frustrations and the different things that come in. God, you're going to fix it. You're going to fix it because I trust you and that's all I care. I give it to him. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I don't know.